Hi folks, Stephen from the Market Direct Group in Brisbane. Let's go for a walk around the Explorer Ford File. So folks, before you pick your trailer up, there's a few things you need to do. First one is we need an electronic brake controller fitted to your vehicle. That will activate the brakes in the trailer. It's a requirement by law. If you want to charge the battery in the trailer while you're driving along, you will also need a 50 amp Anderson plug fitted to the back of the vehicle near the tow bar. This will give us a constant power supply to charge the battery. The next thing we're going to require you to do is when you turn up, we need your tow ball removed. Leave the tow tongue in the vehicle. Then it's just a matter of the handover staff, putting the coupling in, doing the nut up, and we're ready to hook it up to your vehicle. What we're going to do is show the connection of the poly block coupling that we use on a variety of our trailers to the vehicle. Major components of the poly block are, of course, the poly block coupling itself on the trailer, the hitch receiver that goes onto your vehicle when you're picking up, the pin that goes through, the two safety pins that engage it. I've already leveled the trailer, so the poly block will pull in from the side, but typically you'd back up, level the trailer up. Then it's just simply a matter of pulling the connector across, lining the hole up, pushing the pin through, take one of your connectors in, second one, it's as simple as that, folks. Now we're ready to go on with the rest of the connection of the trailer. Next procedure we do, we take our safety chains, hook them onto the tow bar of the vehicle. When you're putting your safety chains on, it's important to make sure that we crisscross the chains. We formed the safety cradle with the chains being crisscrossed. If the trailer happens to come off the vehicle, the coupling will fall down into the cradle formed here keep the whole trailer off the road and make it a bit more controllable as you're trying to stop. Good safety feature. Jockey wheels are next procedure. Simply a matter, wind it up, take the weight off the back of the vehicle, pull the pin out, rotate the jockey wheel around, and make sure it locks back into place. Everything's up out of the way. Put your red handle to the top, stop it getting hit by things as we go along off road. And next couple of things we've got to do, very quick and easy. Seven pin flat plug. Not only is this controlling the lights and the indicators, but it's also our connection for brakes for the vehicle. Make sure you get it the right way around. Locked into position. Then we've got the Anderson plug. The Anderson plug charges the, the battery off the vehicle while you're driving along. Simply slots into the back of the vehicle there. That's hooked up safely. And then just make sure we've got our wiring out of the way. We're basically ready to drive away and head home or head out to the campsite. So we've got to the stage now, we've found a good level campsite. We've unhitched from the, the vehicle. Make sure you engage the handbrake. It'll stop the trailer moving around as we open it up. If the trailer's got to be moved, always ensure that the jockey wheel is in the fully lowered position. That's its strongest position to be in, especially for a sideways movement. At that point there, we can move the trailer around where we like. After I've got it where I think's level on our ground, chock the wheels if necessary. We'll then put the stabiliser legs down, stabilise the whole trailer before we open anything up. So with the stabiliser legs, quite simple process. Find the wind down handle that's supplied with the trailers in the drawer. Grab hold of the handle, take the weight of the stabiliser leg up a bit, pull the handle, let it come down. Lock it into position, you'll hear it when it locks in. Simply a process then. Wind the leg down till it takes the weight of the trailer. If it is a slightly uneven ground, you can use them to level the trailer up a bit. So a quick look at the front end. Simple layout, two jerry cans. To install the gas bottle, simply a matter of open the latch, drop the bottle into position, do our latch back up, 
Then we're simply just going to take the gas line, hook it up into the gas bottle. Just like you do on the barbecue at home. Basically ready to turn on and get the kitchen going. So folks, we're going to fill the water tank up. Make sure we're using a food grade hose, it'll keep the plastic taste out of the tank. Simply a matter of finding the key with a rectangular top. Insert the key, quarter turn anti-clockwise, take the cap out. Fill the tank up, have the tap on about a third volume. Water will bubble back out of the breather when it's full. Then it's simply a matter of putting the cap back in in the same position. Quarter turn, lock, remove the key. So have a quick look at our power system on the Explorer Fortfold. It's fitted with a single 12 volt gel cell battery and a 240 volt charger. Components in our electricity system, we've got the charger, circuit breakers, the mains power switch, switches on the distribution board, and one 12 volt outlet. So if you want to run a light out here, just simply plug into there. Main charger, simply run a lead to it, plug it in, turn it on. There's also an Anderson plug fit to this trailer on the drawbar can be used for a solar input, or if you don't want to open the whole trailer up, you can use another charger. This one's quite simple to use at home, just a 10 amp lead straight to it. If you do go to a caravan park, you will need a 15 amp lead, and what they call the amphibian adapter to go from 15 back to 10 amps to plug that into. Main power switch, simply rotate 90 degrees clockwise, and you'll see we get a power reading and an amp reading. Showing 12.6 volts at the moment, very little amp draw because nothing's turned on. The battery voltage is critical, not to let the batteries get too low to damage the batteries. We've got a simple gauge here that gives you all the measurements and how low it can go. Typically 12.9 is fully charged and you really don't want to see them getting down below 12.1. If we turn one of our distribution switches on now, you see we get a little red LED light coming on. If that light doesn't come on, it means that the circuit breaker brother needs resetting. Just simply a matter of pressing in. There is no fuse in there. Do not take the rubber knob off trying to find it. So we've got three main circuit breakers. Now on the end, we've got a little black dot that you can see there. If the circuit breaker or anything stops, check that black dot. It'll pop out. It's about the size of a match head. And it's simply a matter of pushing it back in to reset it. It's the main cause of losing power on anything in this trailer. First up on the toolbox, we've got the fridge slide. Simply press the middle button in the locks. Open the door. Depress your blue lever. Pull your fridge slide out. It's important you don't hold the blue lever down when you get to full extension. Inside here, we've got the 12 volt connection for the fridge. Tie down pints. Make sure you use them, especially if you're traveling off road. We don't want the fridge bouncing around. Closing, depress the blue lever again. Simply slide all the way in. When it gets in, make sure it clicks into lock. Just grab it and give it a shake and make sure it's completely locked in. Close the door. We're done. Next compartment along is our pole storage and storage drawer. Most people use that for a pantry. So the storage here goes right through to the other side. Again, just to press the blue lever, pull the drawer out. A lot of people like to put plastic containers on there to be organised. Wind down handle for the stabiliser legs. Support leg for the kitchen. Close, press your blue lever back down. Make sure you can slide it in. Again, we want to make sure that that engages and you'll hear it clunk into position and just grab the drawer and give it a tug. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Simply close the door back up. Another storage compartment on the driver's side. So this is the other side of the pole carrier. Area down here, basically store whatever you like in it. If you want to keep it organized, find a plastic container that fits in there. Make sure before you travel, you lock the door, do the keys up. Forward storage compartment. So in here, when you pick your trailer up, simply depress the blue lever again. Slide right out. Now we're going to find the hitch that we're going to fit to your vehicle. The fire extinguisher. Lead for the charger and a full set of keys and plenty of spares. Once that's out of the way, you'll be putting your normal camping gear in there. Again, a couple of plastic boxes will keep everything organised and make it simple just to slide in and out. 
and you put it back in, make sure it locks into position before you close the door. So now we're down to the kitchen setup on the Explorer Ford file. Simply undo. Pull the kitchen out, simply pull the lever to unlock and slide our kitchen out. Locks into position. We've got the stabilising leg for the kitchen as well. Basically just a piece of pipe sticking out. Goes into the recess on the bottom of the kitchen. Undo the thumb, thumb screw, take a bit of weight on the kitchen and do it back up. Kitchen's now ready to use. Tap comes up in position. It's a simple off and on tap. Of course we've got our cookers under here, three burner, physio ignition. And don't forget we've got the extra bench here. Gives a bit more space around the cookers. So in the bottom of the cabinet here, we simply open that up. Under here, we've got our gas line, water line. Water line simply plugs into here, push in to engage. Gas line, we pass through the sink hole, under the sink, pull it out of the bottom of the kitchen. Water line comes up through the same hole. Feed in from the bottom is usually easier. Plugs onto the bottom of the kitchen. Into a bucket or onto another hose, but whatever you do, dispose of the grey water responsibly. We've got our gas line, bayonet fitting, quarter turn, in up behind the wheel here. Gas connection is just as simple as that. One last connection before we can light up the kitchen. You find your 12 volt lead in here for the Pizio ignition. Simply a matter of putting into one of these 12 volt outlets. Ready to work. Tuck your lead back out of the way. So lighting procedure in a cooktop, very easy. Move the knob around to the big flames on the top. Depress for about three or four seconds. Hit the ignition. Hold the knob in until it's well and truly lit. Release and away you go. So turn it off. Simply the control knob for that particular flame. Turn it back to the dots on the top, all ready to go. So we're ready to pack our kitchen up. Unhook your gas line. We'll unhook the water. Push all the lines back in under the sink. Take our drain line off. I would normally store that under the sink. Now I've started to use it. So the door's locked up solid. Tap goes down. Close the glass top, but if you've been using the cooktop, make sure it's cooled down. We're not closing onto a hot surface. So to get the kitchen back in, simply unlock the slide. Slide all the way back in. And when you get to the end, it's got to lock back into position. You hear it clunk. Just give it a tug, make sure that the lock's engaged. Close our door. Make sure our DC outlets are covered as well. We don't want too much dust getting into them. So quick word on maintenance. It's got to happen. You've got to keep your trailer looking good. It's got to be safe for your family to use. Please go to our website, Market Direct Campus. Download the manual that we provide for your particular trailer. Go to the master classes, watch every one. There's a wealth of information to be had. So we're now we're just going to spend a couple of minutes and talk about wheel nuts and wheels. When you pick your trailer up, I encourage you to check the wheel nuts yourself before you leave the showroom. Simply a matter, onto the nut, make sure it tightens up and it's got no movement in it. When you leave the showroom after you've picked it up, go approximately 50 kilometres, check them again, and then check them again at 200 kilometres. If you're travelling off-road, it's essential you check them every morning. So up in the draw bar here, we'll find a plaque that gives you a tightening sequence for the wheel nuts, gives you the appropriate torque setting to use, and the maintenance sequence to follow as well. Very important. So that takes us around the Explorer Ford Fold. What I want you to do now, hook the trailer up, take the family out, make some memories, escape with confidence, welcome to Market Direct Group. <music>